Thanks for tuning in to the Prime Bookseller Podcast, the bi-weekly podcast discussing all things Amazon bookselling. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Prime Bookselling Podcast. We're back with another episode and I'm going to have a pretty short one I think today because we're going to deal with a user question, user submitted question and the question is not too complex, so I will answer the question. Hopefully, I can provide a little more insight around the question to make this an all right length of an episode. But the question that I got in was how I have a question about underlining in books. Mainly, do they sell? I'm not talking about textbooks, but rather bi- paper, business, or reference books. So, do books with underlining sell? And I don't think my answer for this question does not even encompass between between um between business books and non-business or i mean textbooks and non-business textbooks either way a book with underlining will sell now with that said so some of the things you can do when you're selling on amazon and you're selling books that have underlying or other i don't know diminishing features of the book maybe the binding is coming apart a little bit or you know something that you think might upset a customer is that you can go through the books, visually check all of them, put notes in, in Amazon. If you sell a used item on Amazon, they do give you a condition notes column that every customer can see that you can address, you know, like there is minimal uh, underlining in this book or there's heavy underlining in this book. You can say those things. The one thing I will tell you and keep in mind, we're going to go back to something I've preached for a very long time on this podcast, as well as everywhere else, if you know me personally, that that I am a lazy seller. So I've never done comprehensive research to figure out how books sell when you put notes in them and when they don't. But it is my feeling that most sellers that go that do diligence smile to uh, to put those notes into their book into their listings. Um, it does not affect their sales whatsoever. Um, for the most part, I believe that um, most sellers on Amazon do just go st- and buy the cheapest book, though, or, or they buy, or even better, they buy just buy the book that's in the buy box because they don't even know how to go drill down and find the cheapest book, even. So, so with that said, yes, you can put these notes in there, let people know that there's underlining. If you do that. I honestly don't think that's going to hurt your sales because I really think that there's two kinds of, it's not going to hurt your sales, but, and it might help your sales, but it's not going to help your sales very greatly because I think there's really the majority of Amazon sellers, they do not even read those condition notes that we as sellers put in there. So if you're putting a huge, spending in a huge amount of time on those notes, you're probably wasting your time because if you ask an av- average person that buys on Amazon, they don't even realize those notes are there. And if I'm not mistaken, do not quote me on this because I am not looking at an Amazon page um, right at this second. But I believe that when there's the used buy box, if you were to hold the used buy box, I don't even think the sell person, I think the person can buy that item without even seeing your note. So it really doesn't matter. So, but... With that said, you can put those notes in there. There are a small percentage of sellers that probably do read those notes and you may get a sale because you were, you know, very clear about what your book was, exactly what it was, and they might just trust that more than some other sellers and buy your book instead. But I think that number is going to be very, very um, minor. But back, swinging back to the, the, the listener's question, do the books sell? Yes, they certainly do because like I said, nobody even pays attention to these notes. Now, with that said, there are going to be some people that it they do not, if you don't put the note in there, they're going to complain and say you didn't put the note in there. If, But on the same flip side, even if you do put the note in there, a lot, a lot of buyers are going to buy the book and not read that note. And there is a very small percentage of people that will get upset if a book has too much writing or highlighting in it, and they will ask for a refund. And that is just part of doing business as a bookseller. Um, I would not tell you to shy away from selling books with underlining because of that fact. And I would not tell you that 
that you shouldn't do it because because of that fact. I think you should sell the book. I mean, there are certain books that get excessive. Like if every page is scribbled on, highlighted, a lot of those books I'll just throw away because, I mean, my general rule of thumb is is that if it's offensive to me, I'm not going to sell it to another seller. So if I pick up a book and it's just beat to crap and I'm like, oh God, I just throw that book away because I don't want to sell that to a customer. But but there are people that do sell those books to customers, but and and it really doesn't matter how you do it, because the biggest thing is is to look at it from an over over level. So you know maybe maybe tr- start selling books with high underlining and see what is my return rate on my books. Stop selling books for a while with underlining in it and see if your return rate goes down. More than likely, it's not going to change that much because it really doesn't matter. So. I mean, if I had to give this seller a suggestion of how to to gauge what you should sell and what you shouldn't, I would tell you to, to say, what what is too offensive for you? When you look at that book and you say, oh, you say, I wouldn't want, I would be extremely upset if I bought this book. If that's the case, then don't sell that item. And I think if you follow that gauge, unless you're the type of person that's willing to take anything, which I think is kind of an abnormal person, your gauge is probably going to be pretty good and that you'll probably have very minimal problems with with customer complaints and stuff. I mean, the, the other thing I will add to this is that some of these big time sellers They have, they're literally bringing in semi loads full of books, dumping them out on a table and having employees that are paid minimum wage probably go through them, sort them out, figure out which ones are in good enough condition, blah, blah, blah. And those people are always going to do a worse job than you because you're a business owner. Hopefully you actually care about your customers and don't want to upset your customers. So you're always going to do a much better job than somebody that's getting paid $12, $15 an hour to sit in a warehouse for eight hours a day and sort through books. So if anything, no matter what you do, your system is probably going to provide a better end result to the customer than some of these bigger, large scale book operations. So you always have them beat. But um, the number one advice I can give you with, first of all, I want to kind of break down because I'm going to wrap this episode up much because there isn't much more to talk about this question, but I want to break down the three things that I would recommend. So you do have access to notes within your listings that you can put notes explaining deficiencies, things that you don't like about the book so that customers can see it. My recommendation on that is is that if that makes you feel better about listing your books, go ahead and do it. Personally, I think it's a waste of time because I believe that 98% of probably customers don't ever read those notes. The customers that do read those notes do appreciate though that you put those notes in there and it could drive a sale that you might not have gotten previously. Two, return rates are, the what you're selling is a used book. Return rates on used books are extremely low. So, and what that tells you is a lot of times when people buy used books, they're much more tolerant to deficiencies in that item than they might be for something else because they know it's used. They know somebody has used it before. They're not buying this book because they want to put it on their mantelpiece and want it to look beautiful in their house. They're buying the book because they want to read it and get the resources from it. So as long as the deficiencies in the book do not hinder them from reading the book, which If a book does have pages that every page is highlighted three different colors, that's going to be very, very distracting to somebody reading and you should probably try to avoid selling that book. But for the most part, customers are not prone to return used items because they realize they're used. It's a book. As long as they can read it, they're getting the value of what they paid for out of it. So... And the third thing is, is just always keep in mind that that no, no matter what system you implement, you're probably not going to be any worse than some sellers on Amazon. Because like I said, some of these very large scale sellers are 
going to our are hiring people for twelve fifteen dollars an hour to sit and sort books for eight twelve dollars a day, and I promise you you're going to do a better job than they do because I mean. Put yourself back in the shoes when you may have had a job like that, or maybe you have that job right now, and think, did you really care? And my guess is that you probably didn't, unless you were a really gun ho employee. So, so no matter what system you implement, as long as you have a system, it's going to be probably better than what a lot of people out on Amazon are doing. So more than likely, you'll never get yourself into trouble selling used books you'll never get it to the point where anybody's going to really be upset about the conditioning of your books. So with that, um, that's all I'm going to mention about that. Um, if there is any questions about this, please reach out sales at kingsridgemedia.com and I'd be happy to answer anything that I might have left out on this podcast. But the biggest thing is, is to use your best judgment. Don't, don't beat yourself up over this and in, in do not do not spend endless hours writing notes in your listings. It's fine if you want to put notes in your listings. I'm not against that by any means, but just make it a manageable use of your time because if you're writing a novel for every book, you're just wasting time essentially, especially if you're making really long listings. People aren't even going to read all of it anyways. So um, I do want to mention, as always, we do have sourcing solutions that helps sellers like you get book access to books through our network of suppliers so if you're interested in learning about any of them um, we do have more of a hands-on solution where you cherry pick books from from our suppliers as well as we have more of an automated solution that just organically brings books into your where or into your business for you um, so if you are interested in those there's links down in the show notes for each of those services, as well as um, you can jump over to kingsrichmedia.com and check them out on there. Just uh, wherever you go, end up, there will be a book a call a link, and that'll go directly to me. And you can book a call, and we can jump on a Zoom call or something, or a phone call, and figure out how our services might be able to help you. So please do check those out. Um, I will be back in two weeks with another episode, and I thank everybody for tuning in. Thanks for listening to the Prime Bookseller Podcast. Join us for the next episode as we discuss all things Amazon bookselling. selling.